In this video, we're going to talk about an important property that functions can have, and that is called the one-to-one -one, uh, property. So this is, this is a property But it's not a required property by of functions. We saw in the previous video, we saw two required properties where something isn't a function unless it um, unless it um, Uh, every element in X has to match to some element in Y, which we wrote for all little x in X. There exists a Y in Y, such that X, Y is an element of the function. That's our first property. And our second property uh, is that no element in X matches to more than one element in Y which we can write formally as for all x in x and and y and c in y if x y is in f and x z is in f then y equals z. So these are properties that functions have to have. Um, one to one is a function, or is a property that functions can have. Some functions have it, some don't. Let's look at it. So a function is one to one. Uh, which is also sometimes written um, in shorthand like that. Um, it's also called injective, though I don't tend to use that term as much. I usually say one-to-one. -one. If and only if no two elements of the domain match with the same element of the codomain. So let's draw a picture of this. So that... Well, first of all, it's not a function, right? Because we've got these two loner um, arrows. Now, now it's a function, but it is no longer, it is not a one-to-one -one function. And that is because two different, two different uh, inputs match with the same output. So this is not a one-to-one -one function. So that doesn't work. Um... But as long as all the that as it is a function, and that all the inputs match up with unique outputs, then this is a one-to-one -one function. So we can define this. We can say the formal definition of one-to-one -one is f from x to y is one-to-one. -one. If and only if. all x1 and x2 in x if f of x1 equals f of x2 that means we have two arrows so if we have if this is x1 and this is x2 what that means is that <sighs> if f of x1 equals f of x2 that means they both have the same output right and so if that's the case we're saying then x1 must equal x2. In other words, 
the only way that we can have that that can happen is if they're both the same thing. So if this is x2 equals x1, that's the only way that will work. So what do we know about the relative size of x and y if we know we have a function that's one to one? So what is the size of x? So that's what I'm doing here. These bars mean I'm looking at the size, the magnitude, um, compared to the size of the set y. Well, notice in our little picture here, y can have extra elements, but could it be smaller than x? No, it can't be smaller. Um, x has to be smaller than or equal to y, because if y were smaller, then we'd have to have multiple arrows from this, uh, from different values of x pointing to the element of y, the same element of y. Okay, let's take a look at a one-to-one -one function. So here we have the function f, and it's over, it starts with integers and goes to integers. So that's our domain and our range. And the function definition is f of x equals 2x. And it's, I'm going to claim it's 1 to 1. In other words, each element in the domain matches to a unique element of the codomain. So I'm not going to prove it here. We're going to prove it on the next slide. But for now, let's start. If we have an input in our domain of 0, now remember, our function is f of x equals 2x. So what is f of 0? Well, f of 0 is going to be 2 times 0, which is going to be 0. So that means an input of 0 is going to match to an output of 0, right there. Now, what about if we had an input of 1? Well, again, we can just pop this in. F of 1 is 2 times 1, which is 2. And we can keep going. Um, 2, F of 2, well, 2 times 2 is 4. And I'm going to go back a little bit. F of negative 1 is going to give me negative 2 and so on. And you could draw this and you could spend as much time as you want drawing this or as little time. And the question is, are we always going to get a unique output? Well, it certainly looks like we will, right? If we ever, are we ever going to hit um, the output 4 again? No, I think 2 is the only number that's going to give us a 4, but that's not a proof. So now we need to prove it. So to prove it, we're going to go back and take a quick look at this definition again. This is the way we're going to prove it. We're going to use this definition. Um, and notice that this is already put into a nice condition, universal conditional statement. So we can do a, a standard direct proof. And remember with the direct proof, I know it's been a little while, we start by supposing the first part, so we're going to suppose this part. And then we're going to try to deduce this part. So let's get on that. Proof. So I'm going to suppose, um, let's rewrite that really fast. 
actually. I think that'll help. So recall um, f from x to z to y is 1 to 1. If and only if for all x1 and x2 in x, if f of x1 equals f of x2, then then x1 equals x2. And again, we're going to suppose the first part. We'll suppose this part. And deduce this part. So, suppose x1 and x2 are any integers such that f of x1 equals f of x2. We want to show that x1 equals x2. Well, by the definition of f, if f of x1 equals f of x2, then, well, let's look at the definition, right? f is given up here to be 2x. Then so we know that 2 times x1 must equal 2 times x2. Well, if we divide by 2 on both sides, we get that right, the 2's cancel and we get that x1 equals x2. Let's be a period. Which is what we're trying to show. So we've proved it. And you might seem that, say that seems a little silly, but we're going to prove, we're, now I'm going to try to prove um, that a function that is not one-to-one, -one, I'm going to try to prove that it is, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so here we have a function, I'm going to tell you right now this is not one-to-one, -one, but let's try to prove that it is, just to see, again, to see what happens. So again, we're going to suppose, um, let's say yes, it is one to one. Um, so here's our proof. And again, it's not going to work out, but let's see what happens. So I'm going to start the same way. I'm going to say suppose x1 and x2 are integers. such that f of x1 equals f of x2. We want to show that x1 equals x2. By definition, This looks the same so far. If f of x1 equals f of x2, then now here I'm using the definition for this function. Then x1 squared equals x2 squared. Okay, well, I want to get x1 and x2 by themselves, so what if I take the square root of x1?
squared. And it's going to equal now he, the square root of x2 squared, except this is not correct. And this is where most people jump here. But if you remember the definition, this is actually plus or minus the square root of x2. So we know that x1 is equal to plus or minus x2. Well, that's not what we were trying to show. We were trying to show that it equals x2, but in this situation, it could equal negative x2. So it turns out this is not one to one. Um, though this isn't a proof that it's not one to one, right? This is a, a failed proof trying to prove that it is one to one. There is a difference. Um, so this is not... Uh. Okay, so it falls apart. So let's see how we can actually, uh, we're saying this is not one to one. Let's prove that instead. So in this case, uh, I'm going to say no proof, and this time I'm going to do a proof by counterexample. I'm going to pick some numbers. I'm going to let x1 equal 2 and let x2 equal negative 2. And I'm going to say notice that f of x1 equals 2 squared equals 4, and f of x2 is going to be negative 2 squared, which is also equal to 4. So f of x1 equals f of x2, but x is 1 is not equal to x2. Um, and so since we were able to find two different inputs, with the same output, they give the same output. We know that our function is not one to one. It's still a function, but it's not one to one. So the way you want to think about one to one is just do I always get a unique answer? Or will my answer ever be duplicated? In this case, the answer was 4, and it was indeed duplicated for different inputs. So it's not 1 to 1.